Hello, church. As you know, Monday, the 19th of July, the final step of the government's roadmap out of lockdown comes into effect. Now, whether it will actually be the final step, well, that remains to be seen. But as a leadership team, we have spent considerable time uh, processing the details and the tone of what was announced, as well as taking into account the, the broad spectrum of views and opinions and sensitivities in the church in order to make some decisions about what our Sunday live church gatherings will look like from the 25th of July. Now, bear in mind that we've already taken some significant steps forward, some significant steps towards a more normal feel to our meetings. So sitting in rows and having live worship and singing. Those are things that we're already doing. The biggest differences between what we're currently doing and what we might consider to be more normal, the biggest differences are face masks and distance, keeping people distance through booking, through allocating seats and having big gaps between the rows. So regarding face masks, uh, there will no longer be a legal requirement to wear face masks in church. So from Sunday the 25th of July, we will not be requiring anybody to wear a face mask. Now, of course, you can wear a face mask if you choose, if you, if, you, if you wish to, but you'll have to be aware that there will be a lot more people not wearing face masks. Now, on that, let me just, let me just reassure you, we are very, very comfortable that because of the layout and, and the size and the, and the height of the auditorium, along with the excellent ventilation provided by the air handling unit, we're very comfortable that not wearing masks in that environment doesn't pose any additional risk. And that's the same reason why we've been singing in worship and that we will continue to sing in worship going forward. So no requirement to wear a mask from the 25th of July. But we are going to take a more phased approach on distancing and the allocation of seats. I mean, we know that for a significant number of people, this is going to feel like a huge step but that it will feel considerably less overwhelming knowing that you have an allocated seat with a two chair gap to the next group. And we're also bearing in mind that the self-isolation rules don't actually change until the middle of August. Now we will be increasing the capacity a bit. So the rows are gonna be slightly closer together than they are now, but not completely back to what they would have been before. But for the next three weeks, the 25th of July, the 1st and the 8th of August, we will continue to operate a booking system across all areas. So the adult meeting, King's Kids and King's Youth, you'll have to keep booking for all of those and we'll continue to allocate seats in the adult meeting. Now, by the way, if you want to sit together with others with no distance, you can do that. You, you just need to make sure that you all book on the same booking or let us know before the Friday that you would like a couple of bookings to be put together. Now, because it's the school holidays, we wouldn't be expecting large numbers anyway, but maintaining the booking system for the next three weeks, it just helps us to manage those numbers and also to bring some level of reassurance to some people. But then we're gonna be having a break on the 15th of August with no church meetings. And, and this is something that was already planned in quite a long time ago, but it does also give us a chance to review how things are going with the intention being to return to a much more normal meeting from the 22nd of August, depending of course on a number of factors. So that's what our meetings will look like from the 25th of July, but let me just finish with a couple of points. First, I really do want to encourage you, if you are able, I want to encourage you to come. Come to a Sunday live gathering if you haven't been back here yet. I know that for many there are some big barriers to overcome, I do understand. But there really is no better place to, to be. I, I was talking to Steve Wade, one of our elders this week, and he was saying that during the time of worship last week, it was like God breathing. He was breathing life back into the church, breathing life back into our hearts. And I, it really was like that. And so I would encourage you, if you are able, I'd encourage you to come. But also, of course, knowing that we're continuing online for those who can't come or those who need a bit longer. And then the second thing is the importance of maintaining unity as we move forward together. Of course, some will want things to move a lot quicker. Some will want things to move a lot slower. But we need to hold our views with humility and always seek to honour those who hold a different view. You know, we are not divided into those who want to wear face masks and those who don't. 
We're not divided into those who have had the vaccine and those who haven't. No, 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 that is not to divide us. We're a community. We're a family who are united in Christ and united by a common mission, vision, and purpose. As Paul says in Ephesians 4, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love and make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. You know, in an environment that is still so uncertain and it's still so polarized, the church must, in the power of the spirit, we must move forward in unity because that is a unity that displays the glory and the beauty of the gospel. So I hope that's all clear. All the details are on the Sunday Live page on our website. Thank you.